AI is challenging your freedom and the existence of your free will in a very real sense. And this is one of the most amazing and interesting questions of our time, because how is that even possible? And with that, hello, my friends, and how are you doing? Now, this topic is also very personal to me because freedom is, of course, exceptionally important to me. But I think it is for everybody, because if you think about our society, freedom is almost a religious concept. We have it in everything. For example, the freedom of speech is a core right, but then also the freedom to vote with democracy or individualism or the human rights that protect your freedom, your sanctity and your bodily freedom also. So lots of different concepts around freedom, also the freedom of choice, the freedom of religion, so many concepts. Now, if they fall away, if they fall apart, the question is what is actually left because everything at that point is going to go away. It's going to fall apart. So that's an actually pretty big thing. Now, what does AI have to do with that? First of all, think about your individualism and who you are. Right now, it's clear to us that AI can know things faster than we can create them faster than we can and know them better than we can already. Now, a couple of years down the line, AI is also possible to make choices probably better than we can and then also stick to these choices probably better than we are possible to do. So if there's a version of me out there that is better at being me than I am, what does it mean for me being me? So this on its own is already mind blowing, but I think we already know about that. We feel that this is happening. So why is this topic so important to me? Well, I build my life around freedom. I chose to study arts and philosophy because fine arts is unlimited in the ways it can create and philosophy is unlimited in the ways it can think. Now, I went a step further than that. Instead of binding me to something like an institution or a gallery, I went on to do YouTube because YouTube is the ultimate freedom to create whatever you want, wherever you want to create that. So again, I have a layer where I can be anything I want. It's a core concept of my being. And by the way, right now, I'm going to reveal to you why I'm wearing a Y shirt. And it's not as boring as the secret of why Han Solo is called Solo, because pff, that was a really boring secret. Well, actually, the Y shirt is a sign of my success of achieving freedom, because it means I don't have to wear a tie. I don't have to wear a suit. If you invite me to a corporate meeting, I'm coming like this. I have my Hawaii shirt because it signifies that I am free. I can do whatever I want. And so I'm wearing a colorful, whimsical, very comfy shirt that just fits me, my personality and me making my own choices. But let's get back to AI. So let's think about the dimension of what freedom actually is and especially what free will is. And we have to think about that in the sense of the reality we live in. And I will stick very factual. We're not going to go into fantasy or science fiction here. We are sticking to scientific facts because that is very important. Now, first of all, let's think about the fabric of our universe. And right now, we can't really tell if our universe might be unlimited in size and unlimited in time. So let's talk about an infinite universe for a little bit because it has one of the most amazing qualities that are a prerequisite for it. And that is that you and every choice you've ever made in your life exactly the way they are happen unlimited times, not just now, but also in the past and in the future. And you might think, no, 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 this is Rick and Morty. You are crazy. This is not happening. That's not real science. Actually, it is. The reason for that is very simple. If you have infinite space, there's infinite 
amounts of stuff in that. But this infinite amount of stuff can only have a limited amount of combination. So, for example, if you think about the elements we have inside of our universe, there's only a very short list of them existing. But I want to give you a very much simpler example of that. Think about the locks you use for your bicycle, for example, the number locks. They have four numbers, which means they have almost 10,000 combinations. But of course, most people are not going to use these 10,000 combinations. They're often going to use their birthday, which means it kind of goes down from 10,000 almost to 365. Now, this also means that a lot of people out of the over 8 billion people that we have on the planet have the same exact combination that they're using for their bike lock or maybe also for their bank account, whatever you want to use that has four digits in them. So we went from 10,000 to 365 because that's just more viable. And this also means that not only have a lot of people been born at the same day, that you have, but also at the same year, but also at the same hour or also at the same second, because there's just so many people. But now think about infinite people. How many people will be out there that not just have been born at the same day, but they also exactly look like you because they have the same DNA, because also the combinations of DNA, just like the combinations of a bike lock, are limited. There are way more combinations, but they're not infinite combinations. Now, if you think about that concept for a bit, and if you think about that you and everything you've ever done exists unlimited times in the infinite universe, what does it mean for the freedom of your choice? Are you just a copy? Are your choices actually real? Are you just playing out a script that is happening? Now, for example, in science, if you think from a materialist perspective of causality, of things acting and reacting, you could argue that everything you do is just a reaction to what happened before. You didn't really choose it. There was always ever just that one choice to be made because of all the factors that come together. Now, that might be true. Yes, it might. But it doesn't mean that you are unfree at the same time. Think about this example. If you roll a dice 10 times and 10 times it comes out as a 5, is every 5 a copy of the other 5? Or are they individual throws, individual rolls that don't have anything to do with each other? They have the same outcome. They have the same result. They have the same number on the face. But actually, they are still individual roles that might have had the potential to go any other way out of the six choices we have on a six-sided dice. So by that, you can argue, even though it played out in the same way with the same result, it still was a free choice and a free result that was happening and it could have went another way. And this is also, by the way, a realization of an infinite universe is that not just you and everything you've ever done and will ever do exist unlimited times, but also every other version exists unlimited times because this is the very definition of infinite. And I know infinite is really impossible to imagine with our minds, um, but just go with that. It's just how crazy reality can be if that was true. So to a certain degree, the infinite universe does not just allow freedom of choice and freedom of will. It also kind of promotes it because there is infinite variations within it. But my mind is always quizzical. I'm not happy with that. I'm always asking and I'm always critically analyzing. So my question was, what about time? Because I'm one of these people who says, mm, I'm not sure if time actually exists. And you're probably again being like, dude, that's fantasy land. Come on. No, it's actually not. Here is why. Because if we think about Albert Einstein and special relativity, he and actually his teacher before him came to the conclusion that time doesn't necessarily exist in that way. This is why we have the space time, right? so that space and time are connected. Now, the way this works is in special relativity, if you move faster, time changes. And that means that you experience it different now than the person who is not moving. So depending on your perspective and who you're watching, the now and the time is changing, which means that 
multiple nows exist at the same time, which also means that the Big Bang and what is happening right now at this moment is happening now. It's all at the same time. This is called the block universe theory. And Albert Einstein believed in that. He was really into that because this is a core element of special relativity. Now you might always say, oh yeah, but it's just theory. What does this have to do with our real life? Well, it is very impactful indeed. So if you think about satellites, if you think about GPS, one thing we have is that the satellites are moving with a certain speed around the planet and also with a certain distance to the planet. Because of that, there is a minute, very, 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 very small difference in time of how the satellite experiences time and how we experience time. Now, the effect of that is that because of that, the GPS location would shift over time. It would move and then suddenly the location of your favorite restaurant moves over by a meter, but then a little bit later it moves over by 10 meters and then it's 500 meters away. You can't use that for navigation, especially not in a world where we have increasingly self-driving cars and a lot of planes in the sky. We have to have very exact GPS data. So actually what we do is we correct for the time shift mathematically. So this time shift is proven to exist, which means there's different nows for me, for you, and for the satellite in the sky. This is scientific fact. And this fact also proves, of course, that time and now can exist in different versions. It's not a straight line, but it also can mean the time doesn't move, that we have a block universe. A block universe means that everything is static and you're moving through the block and by that experience these changes, but actually everything is happening at the same time. So the theory, a way to explain that is to have a big loaf of bread. It's the loaf of bread analogy. And depending on how fast you move through the universe, you slice it differently and because of that you experience a different now because basically you see a different now like you get a different texture with every slice of bread how amazing is that at this point you might say olivio you crazy dog what does any of that have to do with free will or ai well in the block universe as albert einstein thought about it where time doesn't exist and everything is happening now and past, future and the present are the same, basically free will can't exist because everything already is set in stone and it's just playing out. So whatever you will do, it's already there as a fixed choice. Again, my mind is quizzical. So I was like, mm, not quite sure about that. Uh, why can't the pattern of the loaf of bread change over time? Because, I mean, if you bake bread, it's changing, right? So why doesn't that happen? And of course, that is not quite possible because, um, well, you would require a second time outside of the time that we have right now here. Because if you change something, there is a before and the after, and the before and the after is already a concept of time, so you would have to have a second time. So that doesn't quite work. Um, so I was thinking, yeah, but mm, there has to be a different version of that. What about superposition? What about if what you see as reality is just defined by your point of origin on how you look at it? but any other possibility is also possible. And guess what? Yes, it is actually a scientific concept. That is called the many world concept. And now you are thinking, I've lost my mind and we are in science fiction. But actually, no. <laughs> First of all, we are still inside of science with the many world concept, but now we are full circling back to AI. Because if you think about an AI model, for example, a large language model. It has data points in it. It has neurons on it, but it has more information stored in the model than it has neurons. The reason for that is because a neuron is not just an on and off switch, it's a lever. A lever that has 
a lot of different positions. And with that, every of these neurons can be part of a lot of different versions that can be created, which means the AI model is in a state of superposition. Every information that is possible to be created with the model is part of the model by that definition. So that is the reason why you can ask the AI model any kind of question. And as long as that information is inside somewhere of the AI model and can be created by the AI model, it can create that version. So basically that specific concept of the multiverse, if you want, is part of that AI model, which also means that the AI model is kind of replicating how our real universe is working in that sense. And that brings us back to the question of free will. Because if you have a block universe, free will is not really possible because everything is already in there. But if you have a block universe that is in a superposition, free will is possible because every possible way that it can play out is playing out at the same time and also time doesn't exist <laughs> and you can way way easier imagine that if you think about an ai model because that's what an ai model is basically right at any time you can ask any question or ask for any story and it will create that for you because that is your point of origin and the structure, your path of worlds, your world line is created through that AI model by your question, by your point of origin, and then outputting that specific answer for you, which at the same time preserves free will. So at that point, does that mean that AI is actually helping us being free and supporting our existence of free will? or maybe it does the opposite. I want you to ask or answer that in the comments because that's still a big question and still amazingly interesting. Um, but now that we have traveled all of the universe, that's it for today. Let me know in the comments what you think about that. This was a new perspective on AI. I think it's absolutely fascinating. Um, thanks for listening and see you soon.